So today it's my honor to talk to Jeff Chiva Stearns. Thanks a lot, Jeff, for talking to me today. Well, thank you for uh, inter inter actually thank you for interviewing me. So Jeff, uh, um, uh, let's talk about your film, One Big Happy Family. So what was the inspiration for you to actually make this film? So One Big Happy Family is a feature documentary um, that kind of came about when I was at a family reunion on my Japanese Canadian side of the family, so my mother's side of the family. And I was looking around at this, this reunion and all the people, and I looked at all the kids, and I realized that all the kids were mixed uh, Japanese Canadian. So there wasn't a child there um, that was a full Japanese Canadian descent. And it was partially because everyone after my grandparents' generation um, all married um, Caucasians. So all of the Japanese Canadians had married someone other than another Japanese Canadian. And I was kind of wondering to myself, out of maybe, you know, 30 um, Japanese Canadians, uh, they had all married someone of another ethnicity. And so I thought, well, what happened? Why is this? Um, and so I kind of thought, I'm going to take this journey. So the, the documentary, the point of view documentary, um, sort of looking at my journey to figure out why everyone in my family married interracially, which then in turn actually sort of spawned this idea that uh, there's a stat where in Canada, 95% of Japanese Canadians are marrying um, interracially at, at a rate of 95%. So that means that really almost 100% of Japanese Canadians today are marrying someone of non-Japanese descent. So it was kind of fascinating to me considering that if you look at the Chinese Canadian statistic, which I believe is 17% and the South mm -hmm. Asian uh, percentage is 13% intermarriage, uh, that's mm -hmm. quite, a, quite a gap. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought it would be really interesting to kind of look at how is this sort of shifting the landscape of Canadian identity, um, if we're all mixing, mm -hmm. as well as the idea of um, what can other sort of eth ethnic or other cultures learn um, by, by looking at how, you know, the Japanese Canadians are intermixing and, and um, sort of uh, becoming more Canadian in that sense, um, mm -hmm. adapting to, to the idea of, um, you know, the, the idea of mixing. So how do you see the, make the big difference uh, with uh, uh, Japanese Canadian and Chinese Canadian or Korean uh, Canadian? Right. Uh, like 95% versus 17 or other percentage. Right, like, right. I guess there's nowhere near 95, right? So, yeah. so what's, what, what, do you, what, what do you see the, the, as the reason? Well, I think mainly what happens is, in, 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 you see the documentary, mm -hmm. um, the whole documentary I'm exploring this idea of, of sort of what happened to the Japanese Canadians during World War II with the Japanese Canadian internment and how there was this oh. idea of a forced assimilation where the Japanese had to become more Canadian oh, and thus in becoming more Canadian, um, you know, a lot of the ideas that they had, that the elders had to pressure their children to marry other Japanese Canadians kind of disappeared because they wanted their children to, to not suffer racism, obviously, mm. and so they, they kind of just, they were more comfortable with their children intermarrying, um, you know, with Caucasians or another ethnic um, group. And the, what I find with Chinese Canadians and South Asians, when they come over to Canada, you know, they have communities in which they live, so Chinatown mm. or there's other sort of cities that are more predominantly um, Chinese or South Asian. And because of that, it's almost a segregation, right? So there's not, an, uh, there's not a lot of integration that's happening there. And there's a lot of pressure that they want to keep their traditions, they want to keep their culture, they want to keep that purity of race almost. Mm -hmm. And so there's a bit of a pressure there um, with those sort of groups to, to, to have their kids marry someone who is also Chinese Canadian or also South Asian and not mix. So what I'm trying to do with the documentary is to show that it's okay, we're, we're going to mix, it's going to happen. If we're Canadian, mm -hmm. um, to form a true Canadian identity, it sort of becomes what needs to happen because, you know, essentially we're going to become a very multicultural society, but what is the product of multiculturalism? Well, it's mixing, right? So essentially multicultural, multiculturalism to me may become an extinct thing because we will now have this idea that we are being more blended and being more mixed and thus creating more of a Canadian identity. Mm -hmm. so, that's so, so the film is the documentary, but uh, uh, can you tell me, uh, tell us about the, the style that you use uh, and what kind of combination, like it's, it's part in animation though, I, I understand. Right, so what, what I usually, um, the short films I had made previous to this uh, feature documentary um, were all hand drawn or stop motion mm -hmm. or utilizing kind of uh, very traditional and classic kind of animation techniques. 
And so I wanted to make a longer form film, mm -hmm. um, something that was longer than 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so to make a longer animation obviously takes a lot of money and time. And so my kind of step into this is into live action is documentary. And the good thing about documentary is it kind of lends itself very nicely to incorporating animation. Because um, if you watch a lot of a a documentaries, there is a lot of animation within documentaries to help describe sort of B-roll or certain scenarios. And so with this film, it was really great because I could take that love of animation and apply mm -hmm. it to this documentary and sort of do a combination. So it was really um, amazing, too, that I could include other directors, uh, other um, animation filmmakers, other independent animation filmmakers to do their own animated sequences. So it almost becomes an animated kind of candy shop of animation within a documentary of these different styles and techniques, mm -hmm. um, everywhere from paint on glass to hand drawn to flash. Um, whatever the animator wanted to work in, I allowed them to. And so it just kind of creates a very eclectic kind of uh, mix of animation in the film. Mm -hmm. So how long uh, did it take you to, to make the film and uh, when was it finished? Well, essentially from conception, we started off at the 2006 reunion, which is when I, I first sort of got this idea that I needed to make a documentary. Mm -hmm. And so I shot, I was smart enough to get a camera and, and shoot the day's activities at this family reunion and, and capture that. And then afterwards I was like, well, this would make a really great documentary. Mm -hmm. So I went through a lot of stages and a lot of ideas, but mainly it took a lot of time to raise the funding and the money and the grants. Um, so it took about a year and a half to do that. So while doing that um, sort of funding and fundraising as well, um, I also made that uh, film called Yellow Sticky Notes in the, in the middle of that. So once that film was kind of done and doing its thing, I went back to um, making this documentary because we had the funding in place. And so from that um, period, it was probably about a two to three year period. So overall, it was a four year period to make the film from beginning to um, uh, finishing the film. And uh, recently, it's probably been about three months we finished, and now we're premiering here at the Calgary International Film Festival mm -hmm. for the first time. Right, yeah, this is the world premiere. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I've seen your uh, yellow sticky notes and, and loves it. Um, let me ask you uh, what inspired you to, to draw some of the scenes. Uh, for example, uh, the, the, the rabbit with the Twin Towers ears, that was a really uh, touching uh, idea and whatnot. I mean, when I watch that scene, hey, well, that's, a, that's an interesting way to, to, to tell it. So what, what inspired you to, and then the, I think the scenes uh, right afterwards, uh, the rabbit in, uh, uh, in, uh, with machine gun and uh, the head. So uh, tell me about uh, what inspired you to, uh, with those scenes. Right, well Yellow Sticky Notes um, was kind of a film that was just made because I needed to get it out of my system. It was, mm. it was an idea where you know, my life was becoming over, overrun by post-it notes and to-do lists. Mm -hmm. And I was realizing that they were really inhibiting my creativity. So I kind of took revenge on them oh. again and said, I'm going to animate on these things and, mm -hmm. and I'm going to actually self-reflect on events that, you know, were kind of passing me by because I was so busy contemplating my own existence, my own life, that I kind of realized I needed to sort of look outside of that and look at mm -hmm. the world around me. So the only way I could kind of do that was to sort of look at those events that were very sort of monumental in sort of human history. Mm -hmm. And while well, I was still sort of like going through my process of becoming a filmmaker, and how did those events sort of, sort of affect me? And so my way of kind of self-reflecting was through creating animated characters out of them as a way of sort of animation meditation. Mm -hmm. So as I animated, I would actually sort of self-reflect internally on it, and that internal sort of self-reflection came out through the, through the sort of stream of consciousness of the animation. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like just taking a pen and writing the stream of consciousness. I actually sort of was animating the stream of consciousness on, on the page. And uh, the idea of sort of like the Twin Towers rabbit, you know, um, coming in and sort of having that, that happen, you know, for me it was sort of how I looked at at how that scenario played out in my own life and, and realizing there's an innocence there but at the same time there is a sort of like retaliation at the same time but at a time when it was all very confusing for people, right? And, you know, it, it was a hard scene to kind of do because initially you're self-reflecting for hours because, you know, it doesn't translate well on film because that's, a you know, maybe less than a, a 30 second scene, mm -hmm. right? But in essentially that scene took me probably, you know, two or three weeks to animate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And was, it was a process of creating probably about 300 to 400 drawings, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, drawing each drawing and sitting there and reflecting on it and thinking about it and meditating on it, you know, and you realize that 
you know, the subconscious is pouring into the animation. Mm. So I think that's why it worked really well for a lot of people who see it because, mm. you know, there's, there's a level of self-reflection that they get as well in watching the animation. And there's an honesty there, and I think that was really important that, you know, I was honest, you know, and, mm. and I think people appreciate that. And, and, mm -hmm. and luckily that inspires people to want to create their own, yeah. um, their own films. Yeah, you know, when I look at it, uh, it's already up to uh, 1.4, like close to 1.5 million yeah. uh, YouTube views, and, and that's, that's quite amazing. Uh, quite an achievement. So uh, let, let me sn sneak in some uh, technical questions. Okay, so right. w you you actually draw on uh, drew on uh, post-it note, right? So when you animate it, like how does it work? Like do you draw it and then snap it into the computer and then and then like look at uh, 24 or whatever number of frames together right. and see if it flows? How does it work? Well, essentially, when I'm animating, um, I've I've made it a decision in my own sort of. Uh, animating philosophy to mm. stick with classical techniques. Mm. So those classical techniques are, you know, hand-drawn animation or mm. stop motion or what's called pixelation where you actually animate humans. Mm -hmm. um, I don't dabble in After Effects or Flash mm -hmm. or CG. Um, mm -hmm. It's just not my thing. Mm -hmm. And essentially it's because I like the tactility of drawing pen on paper, mm -hmm. right? So this idea that, you know, you can have this size yeah. of a post-it note mm -hmm. and nothing but a black pen and just sort of scribble down ideas, mm -hmm. right? Um, which is sort of for me is is sort of a, a great way of working because it's very free and mm -hmm. and essentially you know it's it's this fluidity that happens that I really enjoy, and um, the idea that yeah it takes me about 12 drawings to make a second because I work in 24 frames per second mm -hmm. but I use each drawing about two times so I can so when you're watching the animation it's 12 drawings to make a second but each drawing is being held for two frames oh, okay. um, which essentially I'm um, cutting down a little bit of work for me as opposed to having to draw 24 frames or 24 mm. drawings for a second. Um, I can draw 12 drawings and it still has a nice flow and fluidity and mm. movement. Mm. I know some animators actually do three drawings, um, or they do uh, one drawing will be held for three or four frames, oh, but that's, mm. that to me is too choppy. Mm. Um, so, you know, with that sort of style of working, it does take a lot of time mm -hmm. because essentially you're drawing thousands and thousands of drawings, mm. and it's, it's rather, um, you know, it's very tedious, but at the same time, it is like I was saying before, it's very meditative, mm -hmm. right? Because you have this, this way of just sort of entering into yourself and, and, and really just sort of like letting your, your, your thoughts flow through your hand and onto the paper. Mm -hmm. And there's something really I, I find exhilarating about that, right? The idea that we can still draw on paper, we can still create films on paper. Mm -hmm. So normally what I do is I will draw an image and then um, once I've got a stack of drawings, I'll shoot it with a camera and then put it into my computer ah. and use an editing software to actually stitch them all together mm -hmm. and then you get the motion, you get the movement. Right.